Kia ora, everyone. Um, welcoming today is Gray Gibson, a, a Otago alumni uh, with a Bachelor of Arts in English and Politics, who is now Assistant Director at News Hub and Junior Producer of News Hub Nation. So thank you so much, Gray, for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from and why did you study at Otago? Cool. So, um, hi. Uh, I was born in Dunedin, uh, but then uh, when I was about one and a half, uh, me and my parents moved to London, um, and I was there till I was about 12, and then came back for intermediate and high school again in Dunedin. Um, and I finished high school and had no idea what to do um, at all, um, but I knew I liked English, I liked reading, um, and so I was like, ah, oh, makes sense to maybe do a BA, and Otago was close by, um, very easy choice. And then uh, in my first year, I uh, did uh, seven different uh, Bachelor of Arts subjects across eight different papers um, and enjoyed a lot of them, enjoyed the ball, um, but English and politics really stuck out to me as um, the ones I was interested in and which I thought I could do the best in, to be fair. Um, so I, I went with that. Excellent. And can you tell us a little bit about your Otago experience? Cool. Um, it was fun. I mean, uh, I think, uh, Going through Otago as a local was a bit different um, than a lot of people I knew because um, I was connected with a lot of friends uh, through university, um, but also had a lot of friends uh, who were just Dunedin Knights. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think I had quite a nice balance. Um, I'm very glad I went to Otago. It's crazy um, coming up here to Auckland and um, every time I meet someone and they're like, oh, where are you from? And I'm like, Dunedin, they just, they lose it. They lose <laughs> it. It's the, the coolest reputation. Um, amongst both Kiwis and, and also people from outside of New Zealand um, who know a bit about it. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely glad I went to Otago. And it's interesting, I mean, seeing the, the student culture up here in Auckland. I, I know quite a few students up here now and um, uh, pales in comparison, really. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about your transition from being a student of, of Otago to entering uh, the workforce? Um, so finished study, bummed around uh, over the summer holidays, um, moved back in with my parents, had like an existential kind of crisis. Um, I still had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, so I just jumped on Seek and just started trawling through, um, trawling through um, and applied for a lot of really random jobs, really. Um, uh, anywhere from like office assistants to kind of TESOL people and just all kinds of stuff. Um, but uh, eventually saw Oh, it wasn't even eventually, it was within about a week, um, saw the role of assistant director at News Hub um, and uh, put my English skills to work, put together a killer CV um, and just slaved over the cover letter um, <laughs> and got the job. Um, yeah. And what was that recruitment process like? Um, pretty smooth. Um, so initially it was a, just a Zoom interview um, and then uh, they uh, got me up or I flew up to Auckland. Um, I think so they could meet me in person and kind of, you know, figure out whether I was super weird or not. Um, and they, they were clearly happy enough. Um, so it was, it was pretty smooth, actually. Um, but I think I was also quite lucky in that um, kind of what I had studied, even though it wasn't geared towards a specific job, it was uh, pretty well geared towards uh, this job as assistant director at Lisa. And how do you think your degree in humanities has served you in both work and life? Um, I think one thing that um, I really loved about doing a degree in humanities was the fact that I enjoyed it. Um, I know a lot of people who do degrees that they just, they're just slogging it out. It's just work for them. Um, but I'd say the majority of the papers I did um, in my BA were, you know, there was still work at times, you know, it was still a hassle to, you know, drag yourself to the library, do some readings, whatever. Um, but I was always, to, uh, you know, studying stuff that was interesting to me that I could talk with friends about, that I could talk with my parents about uh, and have real good conversations about. Um, so I, being actively engaged like that um, was a big plus because it meant I was enjoying doing the, doing the work and it meant that I was internalizing um, and really learning the stuff I was learning about, I guess. Um, and that really kind of shaped, I guess, how I see the world. It's, it sounds cheesy, but um, I don't know. I, I think it kind of taught me how to think about things and look at things um, and understand things very nuanced. And, 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 and I don't know, it's the classic humanities versus science thing, but like 
there's no one answer in that. Um, and I really have internalized that um, through my degree. Interesting. Um, well, you did say that you cast the net out quite wide when you were looking for jobs, but what drew you to the media industry? Um, I got the job. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, to be honest, I, I had vague notions of wanting to be, maybe be a journalist when I was a kid. Um, I didn't really go anywhere. Um, but yeah, it, it, it just seemed exciting. Um, yeah, and, and I got the job, to be honest. That's the main thing. Um, but of all the jobs I applied for, to be honest, this was the one um, I actually properly wanted. Um, and I think that perhaps kind of shone through in, in, in the cover, cover letter I ended up submitting. Mm -hmm. You convinced them in the interview, evidently. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your role. What do you do in your day to day? Cool. So assistant director, um, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of making sure other people are doing their jobs correctly, um, whether it's kind of, you know, making sure the sport departments, you know, um, put in all the, the names required for their stories or um, making sure people have spelt things right, making sure they've kind of got facts right, et cetera. Um, and it's pulling that all together in iNews, which is like a, a kind of digital spreadsheet of a news program. And it's kind of pulling that all together, making sure it's formatted right. And then when a show is on air, it's making sure people are in the right places, um, making sure everything's going according to time. Um, and uh, yeah, tidying up a, a lot after other people. Um, yeah, which, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's a uh, part of the day is quite slow, the first part, and then it gets hectic as towards the end of each shift, um, which is quite a nice balance, to be honest. Um, yeah. And then I guess as a, a junior producer um, for the nation, um, that's been quite fun. It's uh, basically researching and writing questions for um, interviews on their show. Their show is real interview based. So they'll interview politicians or advocates for certain things or just a huge wide range of people to do with um, political current events. So that's been really fun researching for that. Um, kind of helping with longer form stories um, has been really cool. Get, it's quite cool like getting to um, they have all these political contacts. Um, so I've ended up with quite a few politicians phone numbers in my phone because if we're doing research for an interview about Chris Hipkins, we'll get in contact with his, you know, his equivalent in the National Party just to get them to give us all the dirt they can on, on, on whatever portfolio he's been working on. Um, so, so that's been a lot of fun um, for sure. Sounds like you have quite quite a number of responsibilities with your role. Um, how do you how do you manage that? Are there any um, challenges that you come across? Uh, yeah, I, there's definitely a matter of uh, having to multitask um, a lot, a lot of juggling um, and a lot of uh, high pressure situations because uh, you know if something goes wrong, and especially if I do something wrong and it slips through, um, then everyone who watches the news sees it, um, which has been a dagger a few times. Um, but um, I guess, I don't know, the, I, I think um, exams probably prepped me well for that, you know, having to write an essay and, and, and keep a bunch of ideas in your head at the same time. Um, definitely meant I can, I guess, think about a lot of things at the same time um definitely prep me well for that um yeah i don't know how i manage it you kind of, you kind of just got to figure it out i guess because you don't, don't want to get it wrong yeah and you mentioned some challenges anything that you didn't anticipate going into the role um i guess i didn't anticipate corporate culture so much um it's definitely interesting seeing because i mean so it's so, TV3 is the, the private news and TV1 is the, the public news. I know quite a few people who work at TV1 and the culture does sound quite a bit different. Um, for three, it's, it's quite, um, you know, it's definitely profit driven um, as anything will be. Um, but uh, I guess I wasn't quite prepared for that. Um, and that's not a challenge I can realistically overcome in a graduate, wor uh, graduate role, um, but yeah. Well, definitely a transition uh, between, especially, you know, academic uni culture and uh, working in the corporate world. Um, you got to be willing to just get something done if it needs to get done, 
even if you haven't really been given the adequate resources, I guess. And what do you project for your future? Do you see yourself uh, in this media industry or, or where do you see yourself? I uh, still have no idea, um, but I will say I've heard from quite a few people who I work with that um, if you can get a solid job um, as a producer, you can basically travel the world with that. And especially when I can combine it with my studio experience, um, like whether you're in London or Doha or whatever, um, there's news agencies all over the world that need um, producers with um, a knack for kind of the technical elements as well. Um, so I, I really want to get that properly under my belt and some proper experience in there so that I have the opportunity to go overseas um, with a solid uh, qualification. Um, otherwise, yeah, still no idea. I definitely like to go into something that's a bit more um, not for profit, though. Um, whether that what, what that would look like in a media context, I, you know, I've still got no idea. But um, yeah, who, who knows, I guess. And if you could offer a piece of advice to students who are undertaking a Bachelor in Arts, what would that be? Um, do extracurricular stuff, um, for sure. Um, it's, it's, um, it's easy to get, uh, you know, I guess sucked into, um, uh, you know, focusing on your studies, focusing on getting mean grades, um, but, if you don't have other stuff to kind of back it up or combo it with, um, I think it does make it harder to uh, show what skills you have uh, in an interview context. Um, like for instance, while I was at Otago, uh, I was part of the improv troupe Improsaurus. Um, and that meant that when it came to applying for this job particularly, I was able to demonstrate I can think on my feet. Um, I'm good in high pressure situations um, and stuff like that. Um, and additionally, I guess going back to, I guess, where I started, um, do just keep doing what you love because um, um, like while my job can be a little dull at times, um, it, it's, it's put me in an environment where everybody's excited. Um, and while work can be you know, tedious at times, um, I'm not actually looking at the clock all that much, which is uh, a pleasure um, because uh, for the most part, I'm actually having a good time. Well, fascinating story in it. You, your testament to show that even, <laughs> even when you don't have a very set clear career path, you can find a very fruitful and enriching place in, in the job market. So I guess, I guess if I could add to that, um, I had an interesting conversation with some people uh, about a year ago and I was talking about how it's, there's very clear, there's lots of clear jobs out there, whether it's doctor, accountant, et cetera. Um, those are the kind of jobs we learn about as kids um, and they have very clear pathways to, to get into them um, but there's also just an infinite, infinite amount of other jobs out there that you'd never think exist um, and if you do stuff that you enjoy and develop skills that um, you know you enjoy doing there'll be a job out there that combines at least some of them um, and you just got to find it and job markets mean at the moment unemployment's low as um, so even even better opportunities to do that. Well, great. Thank you so much for your time and for your very valuable nuggets of wisdom. Yeah. I'm wishing you a great day. <laughs>